All right, I'd like to welcome everybody back to the uh, senior seminar, Topics in Psychology, Visual Perception and Diversity. So this is week number 13, class number one, presenting research in a poster presentation. So last time we were talking about uh, the conference talk style presentation and the guidelines for that, uh, dress codes, how to answer questions, what needs to go into your presentation. Today, we're going to do the same thing for the poster presentation aspect of it. Now, a lot of these guidelines are going to sort of overlap uh, because, again, presenting information in a visual medium is presenting information in a visual medium. But we're specifically also going to mention the sort of nuances that you need to know to have a successful poster presentation. So this is day three of the face to face shutdown. So thank you for joining uh, me today. And uh, let's go forward and take a look at how to present your research in a poster uh, setting. So before we get to that, we're going to have one last presentation strategy, and this has to do with graphs and presenting uh, information in a visual medium. And then we're going to talk about something that we're probably not actually going to use, but I do want to make sure that you know about uh, how to uh, prepare your poster for printing. We'll talk about the poster presentation guidelines, things that have to go into your poster and uh, what we're looking for in your poster. Then we're going to talk about how to navigate a poster presentation, how to stand by your poster and uh, be able to interact with others in a very professional manner. And then also we'll talk about answering questions during your poster presentation. Now, again, because of the face to face shutdown, we're going to be doing our poster presentation using VoiceThread. So you will be recording your presentation. So many of these uh, many of these concepts, many of these strategies will not directly apply to your presentation for this class. So I want you to be very clear on that. You're not going to be presenting this in public this semester. However, at some point, I'm confident that many of you will be standing in front of a poster session at a conference, either uh, for your work in grad school or further on in your career as a psychologist. So to make sure that you are prepared for those days, we're going to cover this poster session as if you are going to do it live. And these are the skills that you can carry forward throughout your psychology career. However, just to be absolutely clear, we are going to be doing our poster session online. So navigating a poster presentation is not going to be something you're going to need to address. And I'm sure this is going to be a relief to many of you. Answering questions during your poster presentation is also not something you're going to encounter. But I do want to make sure that we have gone over those skills so that you're prepared for your future career in psychology as well as being ready to do your online using VoiceThread poster presentation for this class. All right, so before we get to that, one last presentation strategy, and this is for the conference style presentation. And this presentation strategy has to do with graphs or presenting your information in a graphical format. And what you want to do when you're using graphs is you want to not overload your audience with visual information. And the way that you do that is you introduce your graphs piece by piece. All right, so introduce your graphs piece by piece. Let the audience get used to one piece of information at a time and use animations to control the flow of the information. Now you might be, you might need to do this in terms of using a uh, uh, image processing program like Photoshop. I like to do the image processing straight in PowerPoint. Uh, and you can, you know, research and uh, do some, uh, look for some tutorials in terms of how to do these things in PowerPoint or in other presentation software. I just want to make sure that you are familiar with the strategy and the concept because it's highly effective because when you overload your audience with information, uh, they check out and they lose the, um, uh, they lose the narrative. And if you allow them to choose what they're going to pay attention to, they're not going to be listening to what you're saying. The important thing that you're letting them know, they're going to be reading that graph and looking for things and missing the main point of your presentation. So when you're presenting graphs, introduce them piece by piece. So this is a graph that I presented when I was talking about my, um, my work on metaphorical images. And we had done an analysis of images of running. And we had asked subjects to rate those images of running. And then we wanted to see how much did adding a new piece of information, either literal or metaphorical, add to an existing picture. So rather than just bombard 
my audience with information because there's a lot of information. I put up this graph, this blank graph to begin with. And when I put up this blank graph, what I do is I use this opportunity to explain what's on the X axis. So the X axis indicates what the picture started with and what was added to it. So for example, literal plus L means that we started with a picture that just had literal information and then added another piece of literal information. Uh, literal plus M means that we started with a picture that had literal information and added a metaphorical uh, piece of information. And then on the Y axis, we have the increase in depiction score. And it's always nice to let people know what higher bars and lower bars mean on your Y axis. So in this case, I would say higher bars indicate a larger increase in the quality of the picture. Lower bars increase a it, um, indicate a lesser increase in the quality of the pictures. So once you've set up what your axes are, then it's time to introduce the data. And notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories on the X axis. We cannot just introduce all those categories all at once. We cannot just bombard this, uh, this audience with information. So we would want to say, all right, let's take a look at the literal plus L category. The increase in depiction scores for that was about 1.7. And as you can see from the legend, this bar is blue because it was significantly higher than zero. Red bars, on the other hand, are equal to zero and they're not significantly different from zero. So you control the rate of information. You introduce it point by point. And I know when I introduce this bar, everybody in the audience is paying attention to this bar. Everybody is listening to me talk about literal uh, pictures that a literal piece of information was added to. And then I go to the next one. And for literal pictures that have a metaphorical piece of information added to it, also saw a significant increase in uh, depiction quality. And this increase was there for metaphorical images that had literal devices added to them. However, this increase did not occur for metaphorical images that had a metaphorical uh, device added to them. Oh my goodness, you know, look at that. What happened here? Because in every other, com uh, for the mixed plus literal information, we also got an increase. However, in the final one, mixed plus metaphorical, once again, nothing. It did nothing. So this was for running. And then once you kind of have explained the pieces of your pattern, uh, of your data, if you have other data that follows that same pattern, such as uh, other uh, types of motion, then you can bring those in a little bit quicker. So once I've gone through and explained every single piece of this, uh, of this data, and I said, well, this is the pattern for running. Then as long as it serves my main point, I can uh, show graphs in total now, once I know that my audience has understood it. So rather than going through all six of those categories again, if my main point is that this pattern occurred for every type of motion, I would just say, this was the pattern that we found for running. This was the pattern that we found when we looked at falling, same pattern. Notice it's also the same pattern when we looked at swinging. And it was also the same pattern when we looked at flying. And there was none of these motions had different patterns. So that is a nice way to be fair to your audience, to be friendly to your audience. Introduce your points piece by piece. And uh, if you have a graph, introduce it piece by piece. If you have a table, do not throw an entire table's worth of numbers up on the screen at once. Put the table up there, put it blank, and start using the animations to fill in pieces of the table as you go along. So again, so you can control that attention of your audience, control the flow of information. All right, so that was for the conference style presentation. One last little tip for the conference style presentation. What we're gonna talk about now is we're gonna talk about the poster session. So a poster session typically would occur at a conference. Uh, we would typically have had this in the psych department, in the hallways, where you would have printed out a poster of your uh, research. So pictured here is a poster that me and a colleague of mine presented at uh, APS. Here's another poster that me and a colleague of mine presented at APS. And the first thing to know about poster presentations is that they are a very low risk, uh, laid back environment. So these are typically fun encounters where you can interact with people one-on-one -on -one 
You can get, uh, you can exchange information, engage in a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, and they are typically very uh, rewarding, fun experiences. So if you have any fears about doing a poster session, get those fears out of your head. It is a very rewarding, fun, interactive, you know, meet the people type of experience. It's laid back. It's not high pressure. It's not high risk. So when you do your poster presentation, enjoy it for what it is. Enjoy it for the opportunity to tell people about your work in a very friendly one on one interaction. So it's not like standing up in front of a crowd, you know, and presenting to 20 people in a conference style presentation. This is literally like meeting somebody for coffee and they ask you, oh, tell me about your work. And you're like, oh, well, I just happen to have this huge photo of my work here, but let me tell you all about it. All right, so it's very low threat, it's very fun, it's a great experience. So let's try to uh, approach it in that manner so that we can, again, have that enthusiasm for our subject matter that will make it even more interesting for our audience. All right, so in terms of actually printing the poster, in terms of coming up with the physical design, you don't have to do this for this semester. We're gonna be doing this all electronically. But just in case, just in case it happens while, uh, you know, in your future career, typically what we would have done in this poster is your poster would have been designed to be 48 inches by 36 inches. So it's always in a landscape um, orientation, 48 inches wide, 36 inches high. And that is the maximum sort of size that we can do to have it printed here at the IU South Bend uh, Printing Services. So normally we would have done this. So you can check out the information on their website uh, for the wide format printing. And it has a bunch of options and a bunch of prices and how to submit your poster. You would need to submit it as a PDF uh, attachment to posters at iusb.eu. So I do, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I just wanted to put it on your radar. This is what you would use if we had to print up our poster session. We don't, you're gonna be doing this uh, strictly in a electronic format. But again, this is just information for you for your own future. All right, so poster presentation guidelines. What are we looking for in a poster presentation? This is gonna be the alpha guideline. This is gonna be the sort of above all else, do not forget this guideline. And this is also gonna work for your conference style presentation. For any presentation, always remember that you are telling a story. You are not just presenting facts and figures. You are not just presenting a historical account of what it was that you did. You are presenting a story. You are presenting a story that has a conclusion, that has a point that you're trying to get your audience to. And you have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end that all point to that conclusion. So everything in your poster, everything in your conference style presentations, Everything in your research paper should be working towards pulling your audience towards that final conclusion, leading them slowly and deliberately towards that final conclusion, making it engaging, making it interesting, making it something that they can easily understand. Remember that you are telling a story. So that is the alpha guideline. Alpha point one guideline very related to this is that you are telling a story and you're telling it to human beings. Oftentimes I find that students overestimate the, don't say this too loud, the cognitive capabilities of a lot of the professional psychologists out there. A, we are not machines. We are not number crunching uh, automatons with our robot brains going around going, show me your statistics, right? We are human beings. And we engage in a story just like everybody else. And we get confused just by everybody else. And we get frustrated when we get confused just like everybody else. So when you're doing your poster presentation, remember you are presenting to human beings. So present in a way that makes things readily understandable to human beings. Present in a way that makes things very understandable to an intelligent individual that is not familiar with your area. That's usually the guideline. An intelligent individual not more intelligent than you, right? Use yourself, you're intelligent individuals. Use yourself as a guideline. If you didn't know about your subject, would your poster presentation be understandable? And if it's not, work on your story. You need to get it to that point. All right, so that's the alpha guideline. Keep that in mind as you're working on your poster. 
In terms of your poster presentation, so what does your poster look like? One of the nice things about a poster presentation is that posters can be uh, very creative. There's a variety of different ways to present information in a poster. And when you go to a conference, you'll see a variety of different ways used to present that information. Uh, some, uh, some typical organizing principles are in common, so you'll want to split up your poster into columns. But really, sort of how you make it look, how many figures, um, you know, where do you put information, that is all uh, very much up to the individual to use their own creativity and to use their own uh, touches and their own personal uh, touches for their poster session. So it is very open-ended. However, uh, there are some principles. So to sort of help you kind of give you guidance for what you should put into your poster, uh, poster and how it should look, I've uploaded a template into Canvas. It's the P457 presentation lab poster template. So this is a PowerPoint file that you can download and it'll give you templates for your uh, poster presentation. The first one it'll give you is the traditional style poster template. This is what you typically see when you go to a conference presentation. So this is what it looks here. And this is the, this is the bare bones outline version. So you can see at the top, it says your title here as big as will fit. Put your title up there, make it as big as it can, as it can go. If it's a lot of empty white space, increase your font size. If it's not fitting, decrease your font size. But make sure that you make it as large as possible because the title is what is going to bring people to your poster. Right underneath that, you have your full name and you also have your affiliation. So your full name, you fill that in. Affiliation is already filled in for you. After that, you're going to put in your different sections and the main points from your sections. So section one, your introduction. Section two, uh, your visual, sorry, your perception phenomenon. Section three, your diversity. You can see that at the top of the third column, it says section three continued. Let your audience know how to navigate your poster with these types of headings. Section four, your conclusion. So you want to organize your poster in that in the same way that you sort that you organized your uh, research paper. And that's one of the reasons we finished the research paper first because your poster is almost like an outline of your research paper. So you've already got that done. It's gonna be straightforward to put together your poster. For your uh, text in each section, uh, you're gonna put in your text and you're gonna make it as big as possible. And this is gonna require some navigation and some redoing of your poster. So I would highly recommend prepare your text somewhere else. Prepare it in a Word document, you know, so that you can work on your text and make it make it excellent. Then when you're done, copy and paste it into your PowerPoint file and uh, manipulate it and move it around so that you can make your font size as big as possible and there's no leftover white space, right? So if section one takes up the entire first column, that's fine. If it takes up more than the first column, put into the second column, section one continued and continue on with that and then fit in section two, and then fit in section three and section four. And if you get to the end of it, and this will happen, if you get to the end of it and you have a bunch of white space, guess what? You get to go all the way back to the beginning and increase the font on all of your text. If on the other hand, you get to the end of it and you don't have room for your final section, guess what? You get to go all the way back to the beginning and reduce the size of your text or reduce your text. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. So you need to figure out how large the text is gonna be. You need to figure out how large are the figures gonna be. So if you wanna put figures or images into your poster session, feel free to do that as well. That goes directly in the text uh, of, on your poster. And again, you might have to make those bigger or smaller uh, depending upon how your entire poster kind of fits together. So that's the template for the standard poster. And as you can see at the bottom there, I have acknowledgements. So acknowledgements are always a nice thing to put in. And they, uh, you know, just to acknowledge the people that have helped you with uh, this research. And uh, also, um, you know, if you had participants, thank your participants, any sort of external funding. But this is also a little tip that you can use. Acknowledgements and references. You'll see that references aren't here. Acknowledges and ref uh, acknowledgements and references can be added to a poster. 
And I have seen some posters with, and I've seen some posters without. So it's not a requirement that you have acknowledgements. It's not a requirement that you have references, not for your poster session. However, if you get to the end of your poster session and you find that you have white space that's left over, then stick in your acknowledgements and fill in the white space. If you still need to fill in a little bit more white space, put in your references. And a nice little feature of the references, you can decrease their font as small as you need in order to fit them all in. So, you know, if people want to know your references, they can lean in and look at your references. So don't worry about going small font on your references. But for everywhere else on your poster, make it as large font as possible. You do not want people to do, number one, have to squint to read your poster. That is not a fun thing to do. Number two, if they see your poster and it is stuffed with text, there is so much text in there that they know that they're in for an hour long presentation, in a real world conference, they will pass your poster by and you will spend the entire poster session not presenting to every anybody. So use as little text as possible, make your poster inviting, make sure that you're drawing the people in. All right, so this is the template. You can see that we have the uh, lines uh, separating the columns. Those are typically removed to give your poster a nice clean look. They're in there right now just as sort of guidelines but this is what your poster would look like if you chose a traditional template. Now, because we like to innovate here, I have also included a cutting edge style poster template. And this was a template that was introduced very recently. And it takes into account the changing nature of how people consume information. Because this poster was designed way back when, uh, before our current sort of information uh, state before the internet, before Instagram, uh, before people were overloaded with information. And trust me, we are all overloaded with information these days. So posters like this, people have found tend to not draw in as much attention. So a new style was uh, developed, and I'll show you a video on that in just a second. A new style was developed that takes into account the fact that how people digest information has changed and this is what it looks like here so it still has your title you still put it as big as you can fit you still have your name you still have your different sections you still have all the information that you would do in the normal poster but you have this huge section at the top with huge font that is easily seen easily read as somebody is walking by your poster and you want to put your take-home point there you want to put your main point of this visual phenomenon for this group of people works in this way. That's what you want up there. So if they only remember one thing or if they can only read one thing about your poster, that's what they will read, that's what they will take home. Usually that will draw them towards your poster because then they will say, well, how did you find that out? What are you talking about? Tell me about that one thing. So you have the one thing on your poster. In addition to that, and I will upload this uh, this QR code, you will have a QR code that is going to take you to a IU box that has a copy of your poster. So it'll have a copy of your poster and it'll also have a copy of your uh, research paper. So you will, as part of your uh, research, uh, as part of this class, you will upload your research paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of those research papers into a Dropbox folder, and then I will create a QR code for that Dropbox folder, and then I will uh, give you that code. And if you choose to use this poster template, you will have that code. Now, again, it's not necessarily going to be used very much this semester because you know we're doing that uh, we're doing that online presentation instead. But I would highly recommend give this poster a try. Give this poster uh, format a try because it is the way that posters are moving. You'll see more and more of these in conferences. And I believe the reason for that is because they do get your point across better given today's way of consuming information. So just to kind of give you a little bit of more background on this, we are gonna take a look at a video real quick here. And uh, we're gonna see just how these posters look in a particular poster session. 
let's look at a before and after. So in the next screen, a few real academic posters are going to move past you at a walking pace. See how much information you can absorb. Now try these same posters you just saw translated to the new design. Now this is going to be a little unbelievable and jarring at first because when people see this they don't believe that these clear findings came from the posters they just saw, but they did. This is how detached current scientific poster design is from actually communicating what you need to know. Here we go. absorbed more, right? You got the gist of probably every poster. If you wanted to know more, you could still walk up and talk or read the silent presenter bar or just scan the QR code and keep walking. So this... Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This is your one point. Now, I redesigned the template for our posters because I still believe that this is a little bit too much space dedicated. You'll see there's a lot of empty space, you know, in these large colored central boxes. So I've redesigned it as a sort of modification of this version, but importantly, that one take home point is still the majority of your poster. It's still the biggest piece of your poster. And uh, you know, all the other information is there. They can still come up and read the poster if they want. They can still come up and talk to you if they want. Then they can scan your QR code with their phones and browse your poster later at a leisurely pace. So I would highly recommend give this modified version of that you know a try if you want to use the main version of that you know feel free to do that as well but these types of you know the new redesign of posters is much more impactful can get your point across much better can reach a wider audience and that is the point of going to a poster presentation all right so what we're going to do now is now that you have the templates we are going to one moment there oh yeah so now that you have the templates, just one last thing, you can either have your poster with the white background, you can have it with the red background for your main point. Uh, either of those is acceptable. But again, uh, you know, choose which one you want to use. Both of them are fine for this, uh, for this course. Um, you know, you will not get bonus points for using one or the other. But again, let's just try to make this as impactful as we can uh, and use a presentation style that will reach the greatest audience. Okay, so continuing on what your poster looks like, uh, make sure that in your poster you're using f uh, figures and pictures. Your poster is a visual medium. Make sure that it is taking full advantage of that visual medium. And one of the ways to make sure that you can have space for figures and pictures and have space to make them big is to use as little text as possible. So here's an example of a poster that I presented at one point. And uh, this, I actually, this is more text than I normally would have. And you have to understand, this is a four by eight foot poster. So there was a lot of stuff going in here. It was a multi-study poster. This is way more than I used to have. So I'm showing you this as a sort of extreme version of how much text I would put in there. I would love to have had much less than what we have here. But notice how colorful it is. Notice how many figures there are. It's almost like a picture book. So if we zoom in on the left side of this poster, you can see that the introduction is not that long. There's barely any information in that introduction, but it does have a five image figure there to explain what things are all about. Uh, you can take a look at figure number two, it has all the little images of the stimuli that we were using in this particular study. So rather than telling the, sub, the reader, or sorry, the audience, about the figures and just describing them, use a picture. Picture is worth a thousand words. It literally is. So don't spend a thousand words and make your poster a horrible poster to visit. Use images as much as you possibly can. For your data, use graphs. Graphs that show what happened. Graphs that are as big as you can possibly make them. Right. So graphs that you don't have to squint and you don't have to uh, move into. So you can see here the blue graphs the multiple blue graphs are very easy to read, even from a far distance. That final graph that I have in that last column, that figure five graph, 
Really wish I could have made that bigger, but it was just not possible with the current, uh, you know, with the amount of information that I was trying to do. This poster was probably overkill. I should have probably only done the one study in it, but this is the worst amount of text that I would ever have put into a poster. You should have far less in your poster. So do not just copy and paste from your uh, research paper. Make it a very um, carefully considered, almost outline of your research paper and know that you will be there to explain your poster to individuals. So you don't have to let the poster explain for you. If anybody needs clarification, if anybody needs any extra, extra information, you will be there in front of your poster. And if you use the uh, cutting edge design with the QR code, if they need more information, they can scan that code and they'll have access to your research paper. There's no reason left to make your poster so text heavy that people will not want to read it. All right, so we're going to use figures and pictures. We're going to use as little text as possible. As I mentioned, you're going to want to make your figures large and make sure that they're necessary. So these figures, they're not just decoration. They're not just pictures that are going to look pretty. Um, it's a little bit more restrictive than it was in your, uh, in your conference style presentation where you can put up figures and you can put up images just to make your presentation visually pleasing. In a poster session, definitely have figures, definitely use images as much as you can, but make sure that they're necessary. Make sure that they're explaining something, they're, you, they're uh, providing information uh, in that visual manner. And then you're also gonna wanna make your text as big as possible. So no small little fonts, make sure that you make your text as big as possible. So for example, in this example poster over here, in this example poster over here, this poster fails on many of those key points that I just mentioned before. Whoops, let me get uh, let me get back. So this poster fails on many of those key points that I mentioned before. First off, there is way too much text and it is way too small. So the, the author of this po uh, poster needs to cut down the text so they can increase uh, the font. The use of the tables, that's fine. That is acceptable. You know, use tables if you like tables. But notice the image there. The image there is not useful. The image there does not provide anything in terms of information for this poster. The image there, honestly, is just there to take up space. And what that image communicates to your audience is that you were putting this poster together and you ended up with this situation here. And rather than go back and redo your poster so that you didn't have that um, uh, large amount of white space, you just said, you know what, forget it. I'm just gonna stick a picture there and I'm gonna take the lazy way out. And trust me, your audience will know when you take the lazy way out. And if you take the lazy way out on your poster, why would they think that your research is rigorous? What does that communicate about what you're, at, what you're like as a psychologist? So make sure you take the time. If you end up with this situation, as I mentioned before, you now have to go back and increase your font. So you now have to go back and redesign this poster to look something like this, where you have increased the font, you've made it easier to read, you've gotten rid of that white space, and you're basically now communicating to your audience, look, I care about you, I care about telling you a readable, understandable story, and I will invest the extra 20 minutes that it takes to go from this into this. All right, so make sure that you're doing that. I'll be looking for this, no extra white space, no extra unnecessary figures. Use your, uh, um, you know, use your font size wisely. Cut down on your text where you can, and make your poster visu very visually pleasing and something that somebody would want to come up and ask you more about. All right, so we're using figures and pictures. Make sure that your figures and pictures are at high resolution. This is again something that indicates the quality of your work, your care to detail your investment in what you're doing, because you're trying your best to make this as good as possible. So when I was doing this poster here, I needed images of people standing, of people running, of people jumping, uh, of people falling, of people flying, that's figure E, it's not a good picture of people flying, that was my point, and of pe uh, people swinging. So I went out and I found these images, and these were not the first images that I found. And I had to look for high resolution images. I had to look for images that would not pixelate, 
when I put them into a large scale poster, uh, printed poster, because what I didn't want was my audience to come to this poster and see something that looks like this, because if they see something that looks like this, what are they going to do? They're going to get frustrated. And if they get frustrated, what are they going to do? They're going to check out. So make sure that your photos, if you use them and your images, if you use them, make sure that your figures, when you create them are at a high enough resolution that you don't end up with pixelation when you put your poster into its final large size. All right, so what goes into your uh, poster? What are you going to be presenting? So you're going to present your entire story that is uh, covered in your um, presentation, uh, your conference style presentation lecture. So you're going to basically have information about your uh, introduction, your phenomenon, your, your perception phenomenon, your diversity group, and then your synthesis section, you're going to have parts of your poster that uh, give a synopsis of all four of those major uh, points. So that's going to be basically what we had in the conference style presentation. What are you going to be uh, graded on in terms of your presentation? Well, the first thing you're going to be graded on is uh, the presenter yourself. So make sure when you're presenting that you have a professional appearance and demeanor. This is very important. Again, we talked about how clothing can communicate how you are as a scientist, whether it's fair or not, make sure that you have that professional appearance and, de and demeanor. Make sure that you're artic articulate in explaining your research. Make sure that you can pronounce the words that you're pronouncing. Make sure that you can present information in a understandable and well-spoken way. And then this one isn't gonna be uh, an issue for this semester. But normally you would be also assessed on whether you answered questions well. So again, professional appearance and demeanor refer to the previous uh, um, previous lecture in terms of what you should be wearing uh, for males, what you should be wearing uh, for females. And then also, you know, make sure that you're articulate in explaining your research. Check your pronunciations, go online, find recordings of how to say these things before you say it wrong. Again, just make sure that you're, as a presenter yourself, not even worried about your poster, but as a presenter yourself, you're professional and articulate. All right, next thing is the poster itself, poster appearance. So number one, is your text easy to read? Is it large enough font and is it with a clear, uh, is it large enough font and is it a clear font? So Times New Roman, Calibri, those are both uh, acceptable. Was your text easy to read? Were your graphs and labels uh, clearly, graphs and tables clearly labeled so that people understood the graphs? Were they large enough? Uh, were the sections uh, well organized? And while we're on that subject, for graphs and tables, you do not need graphs and tables. If your presentation does not require graphs and tables, then that's fine. Don't force graphs and tables into your presentation. But if you do need them, use them and use them well. So make sure that your sections are well organized and then just the overall neatness. Are things lined up well? Are, you know, borders uh, organized well? Is it nicely spaced? Uh, is there white space? Make sure that there isn't. Uh, so that is going to be going into your poster appearance. In terms of content, uh, you need an informative title. So you need a title that communicates what your uh, visual, uh, what your perceptual phenomenon is what your diversity group is at the very least. And if you can, what is the effect of that, uh, those two? So you're going to be talking with an informative title. You're going to present your introduction. Oh, this, sorry, this is for the advanced lab. So normally you do introduction methods, results, and discussion. What you're going to do is you are going to do your introduction, setting up your, uh, your question, your visual perception phenomenon, followed by your diversity section followed by your uh, synthesis. So that's going to be the content. Okay, so again, the introduction, set up your question, the perceptual phenomenon, what are the theories that we need to know for your perceptual phenomenon, your diversity group, what are the characteristics we need to know about your diversity group? And then finally, your synthesis, what is the conclusion? What is the if the visual perception, if the phenomenon perceptual phenomenon works this way, and my diversity group has these characteristics, therefore, they're going to have this perceptual experience. And then finally, overall, you want to make sure that you have a good grammar and writing style. You want to make sure that it is in APA style. 
especially for citations and for figures and tables, make sure that you are using APA style. All right, and navigating a poster presentation. So the final thing, now that you know what goes into a poster and how you're gonna dress for a poster, the final thing we're gonna cover is navigating a poster presentation. Now, this is not gonna be important for this semester because again, we're not gonna navigate a poster session because we're doing this individually and we're gonna upload this via VoiceThread. However, for your future career as a psychologist, I wanna let you know how to navigate a poster presentation and the first thing to remember is that, again, these presentations, they are friendly, low threat environments. They're typically just nice one on one conversations that you have with other individuals. So poster sessions are where you can come up to the researchers and just talk to them. And you can see kind of how this guy is probably a little bit too laid back in his jeans and a T-shirt. But again, you can see that it's very low threat. It's very sort of, you know, easygoing. You can see the smiles, you can see people, you know, pointing to their research, you can see them talking enthusiastically, you know, about the work that they're doing. And uh, you might have one person, you might have two people come up to your poster presentation. Usually they're very engaged, they're very interested. And uh, it's just a great experience to talk about the work that you've been doing for so long to one or two really interested people. And typically what happens is you will go through your poster in about 10 minutes, at which point, somebody new will come and you simply say, you know, can I take you through my poster? And you go through your poster again and you rinse and repeat that as many times as required until the poster session is done. So the poster sessions are a friendly low threat environment and it is filled with all types of research, which is why I wanted, this is one of the most kind of interesting areas to go to in a conference. So it's filled with preliminary research. It's oftentimes filled with half finished research it's oftentimes filled with wild and crazy ideas. So the biggest sort of like, I can't believe this thing has been done are oftentimes poster presentations. And it's also filled with your regular everyday typical research, which is the one that applies to what we're doing. So in a professional setting, what's going to happen is a person is going to approach your poster. If they approach your poster, usually they're going to do one of a few things. They might ask you to tell you about their poster. So they might just walk right up to you and say, oh, can you tell me about your work? Or they're going to not talk to you and they're going to start reading your poster. These are the two things that will typically happen. If number one happens, if somebody walks up to you and says, oh, hey, can you tell me about your poster? That's easy. You just tell them about your poster. You just tell them about what you did, how you, you know, what was your uh, phenomenon you were looking at? What are the visual theories? You run them through your entire poster. Very important, this isn't going to apply to us, but because empirical research is typically uh, presented at conferences, one mistake that students often make is you start with your methods. Never start with your methods. Don't ever start in the middle of your story. Start with your introduction. Get them hooked. Propose them a question. Well, we were wondering, what's going to happen here? What's this, you know, with this new group, this new diversity group, how do they operate? Oh my goodness, what is going on here? Well, let me tell you about my poster. So if they ask you about their po about your poster, simply start and tell them about your poster. If, on the other hand, they start to read your poster, you want to look for signs of interest. So sometimes the worst thing that you can do is grab somebody who's not interested in your poster and present to them because you're wasting your time because they're not interested. You're wasting their time because they're not interested and you don't want to waste time at a conference. So if somebody just kind of like glances at your poster, that's not the time to run up to them and say, oh, can I tell you about my poster? Because most people will be too polite to say no. So what you want to do is you want to look for signs of interest. You want to give them an opportunity to start reading a little bit of your introduction section, maybe five, six seconds. So if you can't sort of gauge that in a sort of like internal personal level, just kind of stay off on the side. And as soon as they start reading your poster, just count out, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi four Mississippi, five Mississippi, and then walk up to them and say, oh, can I, can I explain, you know, can I take you through my poster? Can I tell you about my research? Would you like to know, you know, about my poster? So give them a chance to sow interest, start reading your poster a little bit, and then come up to them and talk to, uh, talk to them about your poster. And do not start with the methods. For our purposes, that means do not start in the middle of your story. Do not start with your diversity group, right? So for example, you don't want to dive right into your diversity group 
because why is your diversity group important? It's not important until you tell them about your perceptual theories. Why is your perceptual theories important? It's not important until you tell them in, the in, uh, in your intro what it is that you're trying to figure out. What is the problem that you're trying to address? What is this new knowledge you're trying to attain? So do not start in the middle of your story. Start at the beginning after you've seen signs of interest. So that is what you're going to typically going to want to do at a poster session. So again, give them that chance uh, to show interest and then approach them and say, oh, can I take you through my poster? Oh, would you like me to tell you about my poster? Oh, you know, can I explain uh, my research to you? You know, and just engage them then in a conversation. All right. So give them the chance to show interest. And remember, they're approaching your work. They're interested in your work. And then just be there and enjoy and have a good time and show your enthusiasm, communicate that. Poster sessions, again, low threat environment. Everybody this semester kind of lucked out because you will be in the absolute lowest threat environment where you are doing this in the comfort of your own home. So again, have fun with it. Let's see that enthusiasm. This is your work. It's finally getting out there. Give it the poster presentation that it deserves. So that's it for today's class. So thank you for joining me for week 13, class number one, presenting research in a poster presentation. Work on your posters. You're gonna be uploading them uh, with your video commentary via voice thread. So I cannot wait to see these posters and uh, see the great work that everybody's been doing. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Stay safe.